everybody. Welcome to a brand new MMA Roasted Podcast. It's me, Adam Hunter. I'm here with the Greg Wilson, the Greg Romero Wilson, one of my favorite. Hey! Uh, it's going to be a great show today. Uh, we have Cynthia Cavillo on, ranked number 10 in the world. Awesome fighter. She's won, I think, nine out of her last 10 fights, uh, wow. which is, she's, she's, she's killing it. Uh, it's going to be a great show. I want to thank Speedweed. Marijuana is legal in California. Get it delivered right to you. Do not leave your house right now. It's still crazy out there. You don't want to catch coronavirus because you went to a dispensary, all right? When especially when it's available to get delivered right to you. Uh, just go to speedweed.com. My man Gino's the man. Great. Yeah, people. man. Speedweed.com. So uh, how's my, uh, my life? So I did, you know, as a comic, I've still been missing comedy like crazy. So I did a Zoom show on Saturday, right? But yeah. I'm like, you know what? You know, why am I booking 20 comics? It's too many. It's too long. So oh, my I, God. Was, what are you me? doing? No, that was on a Tuesday. So I go, Saturday night, it's just me, and I'm going to have an opener. So I'm going to do 10 minutes. I'm going to do an hour. So I did an hour on Zoom. And uh, it was- What is it with you? Do you know no middle ground? Do no. you? <laughs> you like either, okay, I either have a, a, a cruise ship's worth of comics or just me, nobody else. Like, there's Dude. a middle ground to be had here. No, it was great. I made more money than I would have, <laughs> like, doing, like, six clubs in L.A. Like, yeah. people were, and I didn't even ask. I was, I was like, if you want to donate, because I hate, like, asking for donations. Like, I just feel stupid doing I know, that. we're strippers now. I don't want to do that. Yeah, I, I don't like, want to. Throw some, throw some cash on the stage, baby. And I don't want to ask. You like them that. jokes. And I'm also, I'm inviting you to come. I'm like, hey, come to my Zoom watch. By the way, donate to me. You know what I'm saying? At the well, same time, I mean, that's fair, though. I mean, you're not charging. So, yeah, donate. I mean, you know. I know, but I, I like said it once. I go, hey, if you want to donate, whatever. But I still can't figure out how to use the, um, <laughs> the, the, the chat room and the Zoom. For some reason, uh -huh. like, I'm putting donate, but it's not showing up. So then afterwards, people were hitting me up like, hey, what's your PayPal? So that was really, really nice. It was actually awesome. And I had some fucking Randy Couture showed up. So I was heckling Randy. I'm like, oh, it's so nice of you. I know your, your girlfriend can't come because you couldn't get a babysitter for her. And I was just nice. murdering Randy. I was like, the first time you cut weight was when you missed the Last Supper. You were on the undercard of David versus Goliath, just killing Randy. And he was dying. Uh, Ashley Evan Smith came. Uh, Ashley, who's, by the way, a very hot woman. She looks like the kind of girl that would have sex with you and then make you call an Uber, even though it's your house. So <laughs> it was great seeing her. And so could you was there, who's like one of my favorite fighters ever. Uh, I told him his penis was so big, it was going through the Zooms. Like it was hitting the person <laughs> in the box. And then Julia Marquez was there, which was awesome. And Steven Quadro. So that was amazing. Um, I'm still getting bullied by my daughter. Uh, my, 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 <laughs> My, my two-year-old has figured out that if she wakes up at, uh, you know, three in the morning and just stands up, we're going to get her out of bed. And then she comes into our, like right now she's sleeping, right? Now, I'll show you her. Oh, of course. Look at her. Yeah. She's been up all night. She's a hardcore partier. And then she comes to our bed and she grabs me like this and goes, remote, remote. Where is remote? Right? So wow. She's talking now. Okay. Yeah. Where's the remote? Then, then I get the remote. <laughs> then she puts the remote in my hand. Yeah. And goes, Minnie Mouse, Minnie Mouse, Minnie Mouse. So I'm being like, and then after that's over, she wakes me up. Daddy, wake You're up. the remote. You're the remote. I don't yeah. know why she, <laughs> she's, you, she's hitting the remote. You, use the remote. Put on the Minnie Mouse. Uh, and then my wife and I, I mean, look, she says this is the happiest she's ever been since our marriage because I'm home all the time. But. That's for, not the worst review in the world. No, which, look, I, I, I love her, but I still need space. But I feel like the road now is my living room. Like it used to be like the road, yeah. another state. Now it's like the road is like like the garage. Uh, <laughs> At least you got one. You got a separate garage. That's nice. Yeah, I got a separate garage with a boxing with a boxing ring. And there's this app called Fight Camp, which is like every th every three day every day they put up a, a different workout, and it's yeah. free. So I've been doing forty five minute workouts there, uh, which is awesome. But it's just funny. Like uh, my wife's like. We're getting on each other's nerves. Like, there's a new. Wait, wait, can you do these workouts by yourself, or do you need yeah. someone else? No, by yourself. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, and then uh, it's just one of those things where, like, uh, you know, it's pretty funny. Like, there's a new show on Netflix where people win money to not have sex. It's a game show where it's 20 people on an island, and, and the first day they they let them like get drunk and flirt, 
and then if you hook up with each other, you, you like lose money. Like you gotta oh, I would win this. I would be a lock. <laughs> this would be this would be the first game show I'd gone on where I would definitely be the odds leader. Like coming off the plane, they'd be like showing the odds for various people, and I would literally be like one to one total favorite gonna win. And they all have like ten packs, but all the women are like smoke shows. You know, the guys are all buff, and you know, and and they think they're going on a show for hedonism, but right. but it's not. But so it's to then, not have sex. So I told my wife, she's like, if I want to see people not have sex, I'll look in the mirror. I'm like, thanks. That's fucking, that's nice. Thanks, wife. Uh, she, got me, <laughs> she got me pretty good. Uh, so how are you doing? You got your test? I, I took it earlier this morning. I went and got toasted for the COVID this morning. You know, LA County, I mean, the second they kind of put it on the states, LA County jumped right out there and they made tests available uh, for everyone in LA County. And so I immediately got on, my wife got on, you should, I mean, all you gotta do is search LA County COVID test and it'll come up and you have to schedule an appointment and they give you an appointment. And she went, she got one, hers was for down by Dodger Stadium. And so she had to wait like a car line for like about 45 minutes. Whereas I went down to Torrance and sure it was a 30 minute drive, but I mean, I went right through, drove right up, got my test. No muss, no fuss. It was actually, uh, it was, they were very much on top of it. It was really, it was really super easy. And I just, I think everybody needs to take advantage. I mean, we so got to find out. Uh, where, your car, you do it from your car. Do it from your car. Never get out of the car. Nobody gets, they, you lower your window. Like they, they tell you to roll up your windows and just have it down an inch on the one side, on the passenger side. And they come up and they tell you what to do. Then they slide the kit through. Then you do the thing, the swab, you cough, swab your mouth, put it in the container, zip it up. You do not hand it back to them. You then drive up and there's a separate container and you just reach out of your car and drop it in that container. Now, it's pretty amazing. And how long do you have to wait to get your results? I think it's a five-day wait minimum, I think is what they're looking at. Because so, like, and again, like my, this like isn't my like... Dad, my, my dad wants to see my kid. You know, right. Like, but I'm like, I don't know because I don't know if I have it. I don't think I have it. That's why know. everyone needs to go ahead and go get tested. It doesn't mean get tested and then bleh, let's go out. I mean, yeah. that's like, like a negative test really means you're still completely vulnerable to it. You know, but it also means that if you're negative and your father's negative, I would imagine that would make it more comfortable for you to have him come visit his granddaughter, you know, when it's allowed. Right. right, right. Um, but but I think it's, I think LA has really done a great job of getting out there and making it available as soon as possible to everybody. And I, for one, am glad, I mean, I was nervous, right? Because I'm a stoner. And so like, you know, my throat's always kind of a little sore. <laughs> so I mean, I was, I was just like, I mean, I think I'm fine. I'm totally fine. It felt like when you would get the AIDS test back in the 90s, you know? And I you were just- out, I, I, I hate, I passed out, dude. I hate blood. I passed out from a needle. Dude, I was just like, I was like, I don't have any, I don't have a reason to, you know, I don't know. I think I was just going to the hospital for something else. They were like, have you ever been tested? And I was like, no. So they tested me and I, I, I wasn't that, but there is a part of you that's like, oh, Jim Norton had the best joke for it. He had the best joke for it. He was like, you know, I mean, at first you're like, ah, I shouldn't have. And you're like, well, I didn't wear a condom with that girl. And he was Haitian. He was Haitian. <laughs> which I thought was the best AIDS test joke ever. <laughs> and yeah. then, and now it's, now it's the COVID test. You got to go get tested and find out because the, the asymptomatic, am I asymptomatic? And I know a lot of people think they already had it, but I, this isn't, they don't have, that test is a different test apparently. The one for the antibodies, I guess you got to pay for that test. Or to see if you already had it. Right. That's the one to see if you already, this is kind of a thumbs up, thumbs down. You either have it or don't have it. You don't have to pay for that either. Like, that's ridiculous. You have to pay for that one. Come on. Give me a fucking break. Like, come on. Well, I mean, it depends. I, I mean, uh, most of the places that have it are like urgent care. But all so, the money that gets wasted in this world, like you would think that to know if you ever had that would be something that you'd want to, you need to know. Well, I think that the other thing is that is this, um, that particular test is, is, is unreliable or not unreliable. Uh, the the various sources those tests have been coming from have been unreliable and and inconsistent in terms of the antibodies tests. Now, what do you think about all these people that are outside protesting, open up the country, and people that are in California or Michigan? What do you think about those people? Listen, I mean, we'll find out in a few weeks. I mean, it's one of those things that it either you know creates a new infection or it doesn't. I mean. That's it. There's nothing else to, I mean, you know, listen, they want to go do that. All right. Well, if it's not a crime, then I can't stop them. 
Right, 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 right. Yeah, you know, I can make the personal choice not to be involved, but I mean, you know, if it's not, if it's a crime, then stop it. If it's not a crime, then there you go. And you know, whatever it is, we'll find out together. You know, they know what the risk is going out there. They're sitting there, they're making the call. They're like, I don't believe this is true. And I'm willing to bet my life on it, you know? And okay, go for it. Automatic uh -huh. weapons thing inside state capitals. That one is blowing my mind. Because I'm pretty sure you're never supposed to be allowed to do that, no matter what. Right? I don't know the rules. Are you allowed to do that? Yes. I, I mean, uh, are uh, they allowed? Yeah. That's perfectly I mean, legal. obviously, no, obviously it must be legal because they let them do it. But mm. I'm just saying it blew my mind because I thought it was totally illegal everywhere <laughs> to do that. You know, I figured that's why they had metal. I guess that maybe they don't even have metal detectors or some shit. But yeah, I figured it must be legal. But that blew my mind. I couldn't imagine that being legal. I was like, holy shit. It definitely does not look legal. I'll tell you that. It doesn't right. at all. Right? <laughs> exactly. But clearly it must be. Otherwise, yeah. you would disarm them and arrest them. So clearly mm -hmm. it is. Here's, here's the thing with this whole thing with coronavirus and COVID and opening up the country. I don't know the answer. Like, I feel like everyone has to have a either do it or don't. But what if you just don't know? Like, what if you don't know what the right thing to do is because you don't want people to die like it, like they are in all over the, in Italy or whatever. At the same point, you're like, well, people do need to work and starving and, and the, it's, I, don't, I don't have the answers. I feel like more people need to say they don't have the answers, but everyone just taking a fucking definitive statement, you know? Yeah, I know. That's the thing. People are trying to be like, you can unfriend me if you don't. It's like, can we all just... Put our swords down, okay? No one, we're, no one's going anywhere. Nobody, just chill the fuck out, man. You can unfriend me. If you don't agree, you can unfriend me. Like, can I just not agree with it? I mean, is that okay? Like, because that's the other thing. I feel like, you know, because we have so much time to sit around and fucking concentrate on this shit. Yeah. You know that that i think i think when everything go you know slowly makes its way back to normal i think we're going to look back on it like yeah you know i was i was a little i was a little worked up i was a little intense I, of you course know, of you course. didn't get out of the house i think i think we're all going to be a little embarrassed of ourselves at the end Wean dog how you doing man i'm good dude this uh, quarantine has uh, allowed me to explore a new sense of fashion I'm wearing my brand I'm new African. This. Look at you. <laughs> this is my brand new African daishiki that I'm wearing right now. Where did um, you I get think this? I got this on Amazon and I got it a couple of days ago. I think it looks great. It feels great. It's nice and loose. Yeah. See, the reason I got this is because I'm watching 90 Day Fiance. <laughs> and there's this lady on there who's like, she got a guy in Nigeria, Nigeria. She's like 60. He's like 20. And everybody over there is wearing clothes like this. And I'm like, that shit is badass. So I ordered one on Amazon. It's like 12 bucks. And I love it dude, so much, dude. Dude, please wear that to a Trump rally. <laughs> you will be the meme to end all memes. <laughs> if you wear yeah, that at dashiki to a Trump rally. The, oh, it'll, mm, oh Wait, it'll, 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 those hats, those African hats. But that, I think that'd be taking it too far. Ween Doug, you have know. you ever been to a Trump rally or no? <laughs> no, but I would love to go. They right. look so much fun. <laughs> much fun. Well, listen, all your grandparents will be there, so yeah. You know, there there are sometimes some pretty hot girls there. I'm not gonna lie. You ever see like there's some pretty hot blondes, like the ones in the south. You see, like Dude, I, yeah. I, I hate I, I hate to say it, but the, sometimes there are some pretty hot chicks at Trump rallies, and they don't have. Oh, listen, uh, Republicans have Republicans have always had hotter chicks than Democrats. You think I so? Mean, really? Just, oh yeah. Because all the South is Republican, and they have all the hot chicks, man. I grew up in Texas. I'm telling you, there's more hot chicks in the South than anywhere else in the world. Uh, so, uh, now, do you agree, Greg, with the fights this week? Oh, uh, well, are they, are they down in New Zealand? Is that what it is? Florida, Jacksonville. Oh, exactly. So, <laughs> <laughs> listen, you know what? Again, if it's not a crime... The fire, the fighters. I mean, think about it. If you're a fighter and you're looking for an opportunity, and this is your opportunity, I mean, you're you're happy for the opportunity. Um, are they doing it without fans? They're doing it without fans, right? Without fans, they're allowed to have cornermen, like three cornermen. Right, 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 right. Um, and uh, but yeah, no actual fan. No fans are coming. But look, the fighters. Most of them are all about it. You know. They're yeah, like, exactly. They know what the risk is. Much like the protesters. If you want to assume the risk, God bless you. 
You know, you I, you, if I had a real problem with it, I would not watch. But I guarantee you, I'm going to be watching. And yeah. I don't think you can watch it and be against it at the same time. You know you what I mean? You have to assume also these are the best people. These people are in the best shape out of all people. Like, yeah. for a virus that seems to be not only affecting older people or people who compromise immune systems, because it's healthy people too, but it seems like this is not the target demographic for this virus. So, um, I don't yeah. think this virus has a target demographic. It really, it's just some, it, it is unusual the way it ravages some people and, and others it, it doesn't, but I don't think that really has anything to do because I mean, we've seen some, you know, some very healthy people who end up with holes in their lungs. Yeah. So, I mean, it really kind of has to do with the version of it you get, you right. know, right. more than anything. It seems, and it seems like there's a million different versions of this thing. So, but whatever the, you know, I mean, listen, if you're going to watch, if you're really against it, I don't think you should watch. You know, no. Because so, I mean, to me, Ferguson, that is a tacit approval. So Ferguson's fighting Gaethje. A lot of people are picking Gaethje in the first round, which uh, I can't believe that. <laughs> really? Yes. I mean, Tony so Ferguson is. Um, I mean, I think it's been so long since he fought that people have forgotten how fucking amazing he is. But Gaethje is another guy who hits probably harder. Ferguson opens himself out a lot. Look, I think Ferguson's going to win too, but I can understand why this guy's a live underdog and why people are picking him because he fights like a maniac in his last couple fights, he's been murdering people. Mm -hmm. I mean, granted, he fought Donald Cerrone, who didn't really show up for that fight, or he did, but, you know, kind of got rocked early. And then he fought somebody else, Gaethje. Who else did he beat? He fought, he fought Edson Barboza. Barboza. And he just walked oh. him down. Nobody saw that coming. He just knocked him straight out, you know? Yeah, and then also uh, James Vick, he knocked out. But he also did get beat by uh, Eddie Alvarez, and he also got beat by Dustin Poirier, which, you know, Ferguson has not gotten beat by those guys. The last, I think, I think the last guy that beat Ferguson was who? Michael Johnson, and that was a long time ago. So, I don't know, though. Yeah. Gage, this is the, I, I think that the fact that it got extended a couple weeks – is a good thing for Gaethje because in the beginning it was like a, on like a week notice or something. Right? right. It was a quick fill in before. And now it's like, he's had some time to really prep for it. So, but I, again, I think people have forgotten just, he's a terminator. Okay. Tony, the terminator. So is this guy. So is Gaethje. I, I, I just, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I just don't see uh, Ferguson losing this fight. I really don't. I understand where you're coming from. Uh, Henry Cejudo versus Dominic Cruz also on this card. Uh, Didn't somebody say that Dominic Cruz was gonna was gonna like just dominate Cejudo? A lot of people are saying that. A lot of people are saying that. Said I, I, but he hasn't fought in four years or five years. Uh, I don't so even I, think Dominic Cruz is gonna make it to the fight, dude. I'm not the only one who thinks he's gonna pull out last minute. I don't think. No, he's not. He, he never pulls out last minute. He pulls not from out an injury or something. <laughs> yeah. no, he pulls out like six minutes before, six months before, or something. He never pulls out like last minute. All right, but if there's any car or if there's any fight on that car that I think is going to get canceled, I think it's going to be that one. I just, there's like some bad vibes going around it for me for some reason. Do you think it's because Dominic Cruz has been out for so long? Yes, and he's just so susceptible to injuries. And, you know, I'm wearing my daishiki. I got the voodoo spirit in me. And just, that's just what I'm sensing, dude, you know, that fight. Dominic Cruz one time, I picked against him and he texted me going, hey, little man, you're going to eat your words. Blah, blah, blah. Because what happened was I had TJ Dillashaw on the podcast. And it was one of those things where whoever was on the show was who I, I, would, I would pick. Even if I had right, two people that were fighting right. each other, like that, both on the show, I, both, I picked both of them. So I told him that. I go, bro, whoever's on the show is who I pick. It's kind of a running joke. And he's like, oh, smart move. Uh, <laughs> I like Dom a lot. But he's also a guy that, like, if he doesn't like you, he'll fucking tell you. He, he is the most real person I've ever met. He, he doesn't care who the fuck you are. That's just, that's Dominic Cruz. By the way, you know, uh, it does help to be a world class fighter if you want to just tell people like it is. Yeah, yeah. but you see, like, <laughs> I think I would probably really, although, you know, it hasn't stopped me from telling the people what I think of them. So maybe you don't even have, maybe you just have to be an idiot. I don't know. You either have to be a world class fighter or a total fucking idiot to go around just telling people what you really think. Speaking of which, Dana White did a, a thing on Reddit last week, Ask Me Anything, an AMA, I guess they call yeah. it. And someone asked him, uh, all right, you're on an island with Tito Ortiz, Ariel Hawani. Who would you rather be stuck on an island with? Tito, Ariel Hawani, or Oscar La Hoya? 
And then he writes back, ah, fuck, I'll just drown myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, those aren't great choices. Why would I like, uh, none of the above. Like, I'll kill them and eat them for meat. I don't know. I, like, did, you, with a, did you see that Mike Tyson training video? Yeah, I did. That dude took those body shots and then and then just and then just walked out of frame. <laughs> it was like it was like at first he was you know you you took it and then it set in like the power of Tyson reached into the rest of his body and he he just walks out of frame. Did someone did it again. Someone made another one where he hit him and the guy exploded. Like the fucking ah. the last time and the guy just disappeared. Yeah, like I mean, I couldn't believe it. I was like, how much do you gotta pay a motherfucker for him to agree to take a body? I don't care. Head, I don't head. care how much pads you're fucking wearing. You are letting Mike Tyson and those, those shoulders fucking hit you in the fuck no. Nah. What was crazy is that Tyson's 52 years old, smokes a pound of weed every day, and looks like he can still fuck up 99% of the heavyweight boxing you know like top 10 yeah he never really lost a lot of that muscle mass like he's one of those guys that the muscle mass is just who it's just who he is you know and it just that massive shoulder upper air i mean somebody, somebody posted like back in the day tyson's training regiment with custom auto yeah was, like wake up at four in the morning run <laughs> five miles go to bed for two hours wake up spar 10 rounds go back to bed wake up uh, uh Dude, it's part of the 20 fucking rounds. Like, do something. Like, it was the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. Like, I'm like, whoa. No wonder well, why. I think Cust Custom Auto probably realized, hey, I need to keep this kid busy. <laughs> keep him out of trouble. And it worked. I mean, it worked. Yeah. But I wouldn't be surprised if that was part of the motivation. Like, I need to space this out all day long so no. that, uh, you know, this kid can't go do. No, they did. Oh, Even when they made him pro, oh, they, said they, they fought him every month. They go fight him every single month. Yeah, keep him training. Keep him, that way he doesn't go do criminal shit because that's what he would do. I mean, he's talked about it too. It's in his, you know, his thing that when he would leave Cuss, he would go do criminal shit in Brooklyn. So yeah, when, I mean, he got, when he got arrested, right? He goes, I didn't rape that girl, but there's about 10 things I should be in jail for. So I'll go to jail <laughs> for one of those things. Like th that's what he said. And then I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty noble. And then I was like, what are those fucking 10 things? <laughs> they could be like, he would have murdered a fucking, like, Ooh, like uh, yeah, you know, uh, I've always wanted to like ask him without like, I would never ask him because it was that one interview with a guy in, uh, the guy in Canada, he goes on a talk show to endorse the guy who spoke crack. Who's that? The guy from Canada that was like Rob something. He was like a crackhead mayor of Canada. Right. Oh, right. Rob mayor Ford. of Toronto. Yeah. Rob, Rob Ford. Ford. So he went to go endorse, help him out. And then the newscaster was like, Mike, you know, uh, black newscaster, he was like, hey, Mike, so, you know, back in the, you know, you, you were accused of rape, blah, blah, blah. And Mike, and you just saw, like, just blackness on his eyes. And he's like, man, you a pussy motherfucker. How about I fuck you up right now? And it's, like, live. It's live on the show. And he's like, yeah, you a bitch ass. And then the guy's like, all right, well, we're going to cut to commercial. Like, and you hear, beep, 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 like, while he's cutting to commercial. <laughs> Dude, Mike Tyson said the my all-time favorite most gangster line ever when he goes, <laughs> and it was post-jail too. So you it was you knew it was some jail shit. Cause he said, I'll fuck you till you love me. Yeah. Oh, that is some boy. I was like, oh, that is some prison shit right there. You yeah. don't say that shit in regular human natural. I'll fuck you till you love me. Yeah, I'll that's... fuck you till you love me. That is, yeah. that's some lockdown shit. Yeah. That means ain't nobody coming to help you. You wonder uh, about like his like his like, was... gang fights. I mean, I, I mean his jail fights. Like I heard the first day somebody tested him, and that was it. And then... yeah, well, that's the way that game goes, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> like, who's the fucking idiot? I, he didn't have any pads around his midsection. <laughs> he probably knocked one side of rib games into the other. They ended up looking like this at the end. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, to be the, the, the dummy in jail that's like, oh, I'm going to show him. And then You know, no, no, no. You know they made somebody that owed them. Some guy that's like, no, you got to do it. You got to do it, man. He's like, I don't, don't want to do it. <laughs> then yeah. you know what? You're on your own then. <laughs> and they just put him out there. And he fucking king. Fuck that. Speaking of scary, huge men, Fan, uh, Ngannou's on the card too. He's fighting, Rose, he's fighting Rosenstreak. He's the guy that knocked out Overeem. 
Another guy with like insane power who's ten. Half the guy is knocked out, Overeem. Yeah, they both knocked out Overeem. <laughs> yeah, and they're both black. And yeah, huge. he's like, Overeem's like such a fifty-fifty. It's unreal. Well, when back when Overeem was allowed to use substances, he was unbeatable. I mean, back they called him Overoid back in the day. Like when he was on well, there you go. Yeah, horse meat. They said. He said <laughs> That that was when is a lot of those guys were like that though. A lot of the pride guys were just like I heard right. like what I, what I heard was it was uh, the wild west. Well, I heard also that they would take they would give you drug tests, but they wouldn't give you results until you wanted to leave the organization. And they would say, "Hey, I want to leave to go to the UFC." They're like, okay, just you know, you failed six drug tests, and they're all going to be public if you do that. You know, so that was a way they kept people. There you go. That's one way to do- listen. Sounds like it worked. <laughs> remember when like uh shogun lost to uh stefan was it stefan bonner or was it forrest forrest griffin beat shogun and everyone was like shogun's gonna murder forrest griffin he was he was like the pride and then forrest just fucked him up and people were like oh i guess this is different uh it's different when guys lose there plus a lot of times also i, I know guys that took steroids in the in the ufc and they would wean off of it right before their fights and mentally they were fucked because yeah. they were beating guys in practice and all of a sudden they weren't two weeks for the fight. And that's not the time you want to have doubts is before the fight. You know, when the drug test, yeah. you wanna, it, it's supposed to go like this, not. Right. So uh, Greg Hardy, by the way, you're, you're a football guy. How good oh, was yeah. Greg Hardy at football? I mean, he was, I mean, physically very talented. He was a very good football player. But again, the sample size is pretty small because he was in trouble almost all the time. So he was more, he was more like benched than he was, than he actually played. But when he played, he was a game wrecker. But I mean, again, he he didn't get to play that much. So was he like, uh, did he dominate the league? I wouldn't say he dominated the league, but he definitely made an impact. He was a name guy. He was a guy that you were aware, I mean, they would talk about when he was on the field. He was on the Cowboys, right? For a minute. He originally was with the, I, I believe it was the, the uh, Charlotte Panthers, the North Carolina Pan- the Carolina Panthers. So he was with them originally, and they were the ones that, like, kept suspe- he kept getting suspended and doing shit. Out, and so then they finally cut him. And, of course, Cowboys love a reclamation project. It's our favorite. It's a, one, one team's trash is definitely Dallas's treasure. And particularly this season, our whole defense is the expendables. But, but so, when the Cowboys, fuck, when the Cowboys pick you off for, like, problems, that's when you're fucked, right? You're done. You're officially out of the league. If the Cowboys, the Cowboys or Raiders cut you, then you're done. Is that like when you won't bang a chick? That's when, yeah. like... <laughs> exactly. Or if I have. If, I, if you sleep with me, then no one's going to touch you after no, that. No, I'll never forget... You were on stage, and a porn star jumped on stage <laughs> and spread her legs. Oh, like, it was you can, not good. And you're a, and and she goes, "Come on, Greg, eat my pussy." This is what she said. And then you said, "Man, I've been in some hell holes, but I'm not going in Devil's Canyon." <laughs> <laughs> I also said I wasn't going to eat anything with more red bumps on it than her face. <laughs> oh my, yeah, she had bad acne. But she had, I, she had bad, but she, I don't know, she also, it, it looked, it did, it looked like an infected area. It did not look, it did not look like it was well maintained. When you said I'm not going to Devil's Canyon, I was, <laughs> I was fucking crying. I was, I was like, who, who would even refer to a, a pussy as Devil's Canyon? Like that's, I've never. Did, have you ever used that before? I don't think so, you know? And I, 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 you know, when you're thinking on your feet, it just, you know, sometimes you come up with shit. It just oh happens. My God. You're, you're, you, you know, you do that too. I mean, we both, we're pretty good on our feet. You're one of the best I've ever seen in terms of comebacks oh, to thanks. situations. You're one of the fastest slingshot comics I've ever seen, man. It oh. comes in and whoo, right back out. Well, I think a lot of it is the training, you know, and like all the shitty gigs that we've done where, they don't want I think it's from you being a 90 year old in high school, a 90 pound uh, high schooler. That's what I think it's wrong. Yeah. You, I mean, your, your comeback timing is fantastic. Oh, thanks, man. You really, it's like Tom Brady, one and a half seconds. Ah, oh, that's, that's okay. nice. Hi. So, Cerrone versus Pettis, that's on this card. Uh, fun. I, I know now Donald Cerrone says that uh, Cowboy didn't show up to the McGregor fight, Donald Cerrone showed up. Well, it also looked like Donald Cerrone took a paycheck to fucking 
you know, get hit once and then, and then what was this? Oh, like, come on, man. I, I, and to me, it's disappointing that he's still fighting. You know, I think, I think he's, he's going to win this. I think he's going to win. I think that, like, I do. I think. I hope he doesn't. I someone put a, put a fork in him. He's done. I mean, it's, it, how, how many times? I mean, he's basically just a stepping stone fight. But now he's fighting another stepping stone guy. So I don't know what the fuck. Pettis was is. the champion. He's one of the all time greats, and so is Cerrone. Stepping stone. I I hear you, but at the same time, it's like that's where they're at now. Yeah. Yeah, and the reason they are stepping stones is because at one point they were great. Yeah. But now they just prove that other guys are great. I know. It kind of sucks. It kind of It sucks. does suck. And I just wish, I, I don't know. I, I got to tell you, I love Cowboy Cerrone. I've rooted for him every time. But it, I, I, I mean, that, that, that McGregor fight, I don't know. I just didn't, I, I lost him. I lost him. Respect that, I knew that it was going to happen. Like that's like as much as well, I. That's what drove me crazy that he proved everybody right. I know, I know. That was the part that I fucking hated. Was that like I could see this? I don't know why. Uh, anyway, someone who was not a stepping stone, uh, who was one of the best fighters in the world. Also, I think the most underrated fighter. I was actually Cynthia. Uh, how are you, by the way? Cynthia Cabillo's with us. Hey. She's living in her car. Um, yes. so, uh, <laughs> beautiful Mexican, tough fighter. But I was looking at your, by the way, I was looking at your fights last night. Cause I, you know, like one of those things, like people say you're only as good as your last fight. And I think that's complete bullshit. I think you got to look at someone's whole, all their fights. The people that you beat, your first, Jillian Robertson. Okay. Who's in the UFC, Montana De La Rosa, UFC fighter, Courtney Casey, UFC fighter, uh, tough girl, Pearl Gonzalez, Jojo Calderwood. As an amateur, you beat Aspen Ladd. What's good? Why are people not giving the credit you deserve? Like, holy shit, that's a fucking resume and a half. I mean, I think it's just been a rough last two years. You know how to deal with the suspension, then, you know, the weight cuts. So it's like, um, I think that's, you know, unless you have, you know, you're, you're, you're doing everything right <laughs> and not messing up, then people are going to, you know, give me credit. But it's kind of hard to when I miss weight in my last one and I got to draw. So I know I beat a lot of these tough girls, but, man, you know, it, it kind of is what it is. You know, all the girls in the UFC are pretty tough, so. Uh, you're being humble. You're being humble. Now, Greg, if you don't know <laughs> Cynthia, here's a girl who, who was, an, she was an athlete, kind of. Her, her, her boyfriend cheated on her when she was 21. <laughs> She was working as like, as like a, as a receptionist at like a used car place or something, right? She goes and takes oh, a- this all adds up nicely. She goes and takes a kickboxing class to get in shape, right? Cause she's like, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna get a revenge body. Now it is <laughs> seven years later and she's top 10 in the world. Like how fucking cool is that? That's so, right, you know what happens. You never fuck a girl over. They always come back in China, you know? I was a, at know. least it worked out for me because that's like more of a positive thing because I got somewhere, but you know. <laughs> uh, now, now your first fight, you took on 10 days notice against Amanda mm -hmm. Bobby Cooper and stopped her. Stopped yeah. her. Uh, did, did you, did, was it just one of those things where you thought maybe you wouldn't get a second shot to make the UFC? Um, mm, no, dude, I was just, before I made my pro debut, I was injured. I broke my arm in the same, in my forearm three times in the same place. So I had to sit out for like three years before I can actually make my pro debut. So once I got my pro debut, I was like, dude, there's no time to like miss, you know, whatever opportunity comes, you gotta take it. And, you know, I always stay in the gym, you know? So I was like, once I went pro, I just kept knocking them out. Like, I think I was six months of being a professional and I got the call and I was like, fuck yeah, let's do it. You know, this is what I've been like working for, you yeah. know? So. No, 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 Amanda Bobby Cooper, by the way, I don't know if it was that fight, she weighs in, goes up to Dana White, and tries to grab his cock. Yeah, I remember <laughs> yeah. that. That, then, that, was, that was funny. That was a good one. She got him. <laughs> she got him. Oh. But like, I just I'm waiting to get a contract. But that also shows you the double standards of like men and women. Because if a guy weighed in and then tried to like fucking grab a ring girl's pussy or something. That he Not if you're Donald Trump. <laughs> it's a good point. It's a good point. And you become president. <laughs> exactly. Then you become yeah. president. Uh, then you can find <laughs> Pearl Gonzalez, right? She goes to New York. First time MMA's in New York, the biggest deal ever. She, this girl gets implants. Her opponent gets implants. The titty they, gate. 
they wouldn't let her fucking fight with implants, right? And then, so she doesn't know if she's fighting, she is fighting. You beat Pearl Gonzalez. There was a time, I watched that fight last night, where her tits were almost coming out, and, yes. and you grabbed them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, was that on purpose or no? You know, um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you were just helping her out. You didn't want her to be embarrassed. But, you know, if we, they would have had to stop the fight, you know, if she, you know yeah. so I was yeah, helping her out. Exactly. Oh, that, was, that was very nice of you. That was like, <laughs> then, then she fights Carla Esparza, right? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping around, but Carla Esparza, and Carla Esparza is an all-American wrestler. I think she was a state champion. This was four years in college. Cynthia has no wrestling background. And you took her down in the first round and just fucking beat the shit out of her in the first round with your wrestling. I mean, was that like a, that must've been a huge win for you, no? Yeah, uh, honestly, that was, that was the game plan, but then that's what I should've kept doing for the second or third. I had an amazing fight camp. Uh, that was the plan, I wanted to be GSP, you know? He was in a wrestler, but he's taking down the wrestler. So I was like, you gotta take her out right away in the first minute and then beat on her. She gets out of the first round, just, you know, knock her out standing second or third, you know? Cause you, I just didn't think she was gonna have that kind of a, you know, stand up, but it's awkward. And she ended up like still getting in those shots and, you know, I should have kept taking her down, but I didn't. Um, we were definitely training for that, but. It was a close fight. Ball. So it, it was I think the <laughs> second and third, both could have went either ways. And then she, she gets the loss and then she goes, that's fucking bullshit, motherfucker. And starts like whipping people's in the crowd's asses during the fight. Yeah, that's right. I was like, walk around. I was like, fuck this shit. I don't know what get is, what get, what get is to me. It's like, <laughs> it's like a, I'm like a whole different person. Like when I go and fight, like I have like this huge, like mean attitude and I'm like, fuck you, fuck this. And I'm not really that way outside, but you know, it's pretty cool. Well, I, I love it. But then, then you got popped from marijuana, which was such bullshit because now every fighter in the world is smoking weed and you got yeah. suspended for nine months. I mean, does that bother you? It, it does, you know, but fuck man life's not fucking fair honestly I was like really pissed off because I was like I know other fighters that you know tested positive for marijuana got three months and the Nevada State Commission wanted to give me nine months and Canelo six months for a second offense on computer um, <laughs> yeah. it's just fucking crazy it's insane you know and um I just had to fucking eat it up and it, and it hurt me because I lost fucking I lost some really good sponsors I was one of the first athletes to get sponsored by Body Armor that was a huge freaking loss for me. And I think there's a lot of other, other opportunities that definitely where this situation hurt me because people look me up and they see, oh, I got suspended. And sometimes they might not even look into what it was or what the situation was. And they're like, oh, you fucking, like, for example, probably once a week, I'll get some dude fucking messaging me and tell me, oh, are you, are you off the dope? So you can finally get, I'm like, this fucking, I'm like, uh, ah, yeah, it's, oh. I, it sucks. But, <laughs> you know, something, you know, you got to deal with. So, uh, fuck it. Now your last fight, fighting. your last fight against Marina Rodriguez, uh, it was a great fight. I mean, first of all, she hit you in the in the rib, uh, and need you in the rib, and they were like, "Oh, it's over, it's over, it's over." How, uh -huh. hurt, how hurt were you in that fight? Um, I would say in the second round, she definitely hurt me. She she winded me on one of them, and so my my arms were like you know down, and then she just like kind of tried to like fuck me up that entire time, and I was just honestly, I was just trying to survive in that second round and then on the third round I was like fuck I gotta take this bitch down this is my only chance to like win this fight you know and I almost got it stopped I, you like, did I mean you were beating the you had her down and you were beating the shit out of her uh, yeah. and I was like I was super proud of you and also a lot of people would have like quit or mentally quit and you didn't um and yeah, I don't like to lose that's no, for that sure she hurt me but <laughs> But, but people don't know that because I saw you like a couple weeks later and you had like the worst staph infection I've ever seen. It was actually the week that week after because it was at um, I actually did. I took another that grappling match two days yeah. after. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was the worst thing ever. I had the worst luck, but hey. so what happened? <laughs> I went to, now you went to Thailand and got staph infection. I got it in my eye and then I had to hide it throughout the whole fucking fight camp and I wasn't going to pull out. I couldn't do any contact training. So I had to train myself by myself for that fight camp for at least four or five weeks. Um, but I couldn't pull out. I needed to fight. I needed to make some money. <laughs> and so I went and then um, during fight week, it popped again on my arm. Here's the, uh, 
freaking scar it's crazy um but uh it yep it fucking it was just it fucked with everything it was just kind of one of those things where everything just was going the wrong way but you know that's that's where we're at till I get tested like I had so many times like when I'm like trying to pursue fighting that shit everything told me not to fucking do it but I'm still fucking here how do you so get staff like, your, how do you get staff in your eye um from training over there they get it's kind of well step like a pink eye could be like a staff but it wanted it like became super aggressive i think it was from grappling and then also you know you ride the little moped bikes and you don't yeah. wear fucking helmets right so all the debris and stuff just gets in your eyes you get little cuts in your eyes because because the doctors over there told me too that I had little slashes of like just like little cuts and so i'm thinking as just you know all the mats over there i tried my best because it's it's known you know in humidity, like, there's a lot of bacteria. I've never had it before in my life. I was so fucking scary. Like, so scary. My eye was, like... Did you go to... Okay. Now, how are the hospitals in Thailand? <laughs> uh, yeah. Dude, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of scary, hut. dude. It was scary because, like, I couldn't, like... I didn't want to, like, let every, anybody know what, what was going on, obviously, so I had to keep it in the wraps. And on top of that, I couldn't come home even if I wanted to. Cause they won't let you fly with that if you're contagious. So it was just kind of like, I felt stuck there. I didn't understand the language. I had to drive myself to the hospital on the bike every week. Like wow. it was just, it was just one of those. Yeah. I mean, we wow. fought through it though. I'm still proud of myself for like pulling that shit off the fight still. Like, yeah, you know? but people are like, fuck <laughs> you, you missed weight. You're like, I couldn't train for five weeks. I had staph infection in my eye. I, I drove <laughs> myself to the hospital. My fucking arm was broken, you, you know? Dude. <laughs> I think every fighter goes to this shit. Like, no, they don't. Know, they don't, they don't go through that. Just complain they don't, more. They don't go to Thailand. I don't want to come they, up with excuses, man. Shit happens. <laughs> but yeah, I'm but every about fighter it. does not go through staph infection in their eye in Thailand with no fucking <laughs> yeah. health, with, with no health insurance. So, I mean, <laughs> right? I mean, did, 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 yeah. your insurance, did your insurance cover that or no? No. Did they pay out of pocket? Yeah. Out of paying butt time monies every week, cash. It was fucking horrible. Were you stripping to make money on the on the, on the weekends or anything or no? Oh, uh, we're not gonna talk about it. But I did visit Patong. If you guys know where Patong is, because no, I'm just kidding, I never been oh, to Patong. Okay. But I hear that's like the Vegas of like Thailand, and I never. Oh, I, in my mind, I was literally making notes. I'm like, all right, remember Patong. Yeah, me too. Me too. I'm get, right, we're gonna go to Thailand. We in the weed dog. We're gonna yeah, get off. Be like, gone, we're gonna be like, take us to Patong. <laughs> He's gonna fucking stick your Patong up fucking somewhere. Um, <laughs> You guys now, are gonna be some very nice lady boys there. I mean, and, you know, I'm fine with that. And, and it's know. cool there. You'll be, you'll get a pass there, like we all do it. We don't <laughs> have to go to Thailand for that. We got Wean Dog right here. So, it's like a lot so of your, dude. A, a lot of your fights, Cynthia, they start off standing, and you're like, I'm gonna work on my boxing, and then, yeah. and then you're like, fuck this, I'm taking this girl down and choking her. Is, is, yeah. that, is that what happens? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, like, okay, so, you know, this just not fucking working out. I'm gonna take this bitch down, and like, why am I even making it close? But I feel like, you know, it was important for me to work on those other areas. You know, I still have a long way to go, but you know, sometimes I, I just get in my head. I'm like, dude, why do I even? And it's not even like I take a lot of damage at all in like my last fights, but I fucking make it too easy for them sometimes by just standing up. I just need to take them down and kabib all of them. You know? Yeah, just just win, just win. Yeah. Um, now, do you, uh, now you, you left your gym, you were at Team Alpha Male, then you were at Justin Bushold. Now, where are you? <laughs> no, out of AKA, You're back AKA? home, San Jose, I was born and raised here, so um, it feels good. I'm like back with my family. Okay, now why did you leave everyone's gym? Um, well, Team Alpha Male left like a year ago because of coaching and everything all just like changed. I think uh, once we moved to the big gym, because we moved locations, it just kind of, it wasn't the same anymore. So um, I ended up quitting the gym and then um, I went to Thailand and then I was going to wait if uh, my coach does that Buckle was going to have a gym, but then it happened. I was like, I can't wait around. And like, I was like, I need to come home to be with my family. And also, so I was like, AK is right there. I was like, I don't want to go back to Thailand and have that shit happen again. Although it was great, dude. The team was great. The coaches were great. I really loved it out there, but I will. I don't want to go through that shit again. So I was like, it made me really miss my family and stuff when I was out there and I was stuck. And I was like, I haven't spent any time with my parents in the last freaking six years, you know, since I moved away. So I was like, they're not getting older. <laughs> I mean, any younger, just getting older. So uh, I was like, 
AK is here. You know, I have a lot of people that I started off with years ago, and I was like, it just made sense. I was like, um, I no, really I know, think that I know I the guys. I know the uh, the guys, the, the Khabibs, and all the you know Josh Thompson, all the great fighters there. Who are some of the girls there? Uh, we have Mallory Martin. She just made her debut for the UC last in in uh, yeah. in uh, December, just with me, and she's awesome. She's great. I don't know if you ever seen her clips off of Invicta, where she was just like, "Happy Halloween." Happy Halloween. And she's just like on top of this girl ground and <laughs> screaming happy Halloween. And then another one, she's like, no one can save you. She likes talking shit while she's ground and pounding. So she's awesome. I love her. Uh, and then um, there's also Brianna Van Buren. She's another Charlotte in the UFC. Um, I haven't been able to train with her too much. She's coming off of an injury. But, you know, we have uh, the, us three. And that's, that's pretty good to start with. Because normally I really don't even have any girls to train with uh, when I first started. So. And they have a lot of smaller guys now, too. So that's right. why I was like, man, this is working out. They have a lot of people. Shit no, sucks, though, man. Fucking no, I, know last I can't time in Sacramento, Corona. I know in Sacramento you were, like, super thirsty. Uh, you didn't want to hook, hook up with anybody because you don't want to get, a, you know, around. <laughs> um, are you at least dating now? <laughs> super thirsty. <laughs> what? Uh, Who are says you, that? <laughs> are you at least You were dating? super thirsty. Oh, he was. My God. He was like, she was like the hot Mexican cougar, but like didn't want to get away with a bad reputation. So she was not dating anyone. And I, I saw her, like there were guys hitting on her left and right. She's like, sorry, you're just not up to my, you know. So do you have a boyfriend now? Are you dating anyone? Are you on Tinder? No, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not dating anyone. I was like, I'm definitely not on Tinder. Probably this is the worst time to be on Tinder. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then right now, I'm not even going to try to try to talk to anyone right now because I'll probably going to, you know, people are probably lonely as fuck right now, you know, yeah. just probably saying things they don't mean and oh, yeah. out of their mind. So we're just going to wait till things get back to normal. But more than likely, I'm just going to still be focusing on fighting. And if someone comes along and changes my mind, we'll see. But okay, yeah, right now, we'll That's see. Okay. I know, I, I, oh, I know that you and that other girl that were there that came to my show, you guys came an hour late, but you guys were wearing those like booty shorts uh that other hot girl in the ufc i think she's from like Columbia. oh tracy cortez yeah you guys were like out, you guys were like on the prowl you, yeah you, you know? should get her yeah we were on a mission yeah yeah well I'm, we I'm were guy, late yeah but I'm, then I'm, we were late yeah you were <laughs> that sounds right pretty much so this, this is like the story of my life um, and then we went to go eat a cheeseburger and french fries after okay so yeah. so all right so, hot <laughs> <laughs> That's the part I'm in for. Tell me about that cheeseburger. Well, and we went to uh, Shake Shack, I think. Mm. Right on. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty good. It was all right. Now, are you looking for like Latino men or black men or white men? Do you have a type? Asian men? Uh, um, no, I don't have a type. Chinese. Um, it's probably Chinese just someone who. <laughs> no, just kidding. No. Somebody who was. Somebody who's probably um, I don't know, probably not an asshole and has her shit together. <laughs> No, I don't have a, I'm not going to pick on anybody. I don't care about, uh, you know, what your race is. Good. I know a lot, a lot of guys at AKA trying to get in there. I, I know there's a lot of guys like, there were like Luke Rockhold back in the day. There were a lot of guys, you know, uh, a lot of the, maybe some of the Dagestani guys. Are, are, are any... <laughs> Actually, no, they don't, they, they, uh, they, <laughs> they don't talk to any of the girls. They only hug the men when I was just grappling with each other and stuff, you know. But I say, oh, it's like, it's like we're gonna go shake hands, and I'm like, oh, just kidding. <laughs> wow, <laughs> you know? that, that makes sense. Now, 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 Greg, Cynthia is a very beautiful uh, Latino woman. Uh, back in the day, now, would you be able to date a girl that can kick your ass or no, Greg? Uh oh, totally. <laughs> I would. I, are you kidding me? <laughs> would, listen, if I dated a girl like her that could kick ass, I would be the biggest, I'm already the biggest loud mouth at the bar, but I'd really let it go because I'd be like, oh, <laughs> you want to start with me? honey, he's trying to start something with me. And then I would let her take over. That's true. But then also, you know, when you, you marry a lot or you get with a Latina who also knows how to fight, just know you can't fuck with her because she'll fuck you oh. up when she's Oh, angry. for sure. Let me ask you that's something. Why, you know, that's why it's not good for me to date, you know, because I got to make sure I don't, you know. Because I, I was born in San Jose, too. I'm also Mexican, Latino. And here's the thing. Were you one of those girls in high school that would go around, like, would you beat up other girls in high school? Like, were you, did you like scrapping with girls, like, early on? Because every high school had a couple girls that, my sister was one of them that just, would just go up, just like, ah! You know? Well, I mean, honestly, 
I got like in a maybe two fights or something like that but and I never started them but I always finished them that was a problem there was a lot of girls that were like that they were bullies and they yeah. were normally the only time they would take flight is when they knew that they, they they that they scared that girl or whatever they had something over but anytime yeah I never it never really ended well for those girls who who wanted to fight yeah. me but never started it but always finished it that's for damn yeah there, there were always those locas that just wanted to just fight somebody it was crazy well, that's the switch that comes on when like, I walk out. You know what I mean? That's the yeah. East Side Latina that comes out in the cage. That's like, you know, all, all crazy. Totally. I can't hold it. I, I can't hold it in. It just comes out. And then here's the other thing. You know, uh, everybody kind of has the wrong idea of what Cinco de Mayo actually is. You know? And most people, most people that aren't Mexican-Americans, they think it's, it's Mexican Independence Day. And they also think it's Taco Day. Just, you know, luckily for tomorrow is Taco Tuesday. It is. Taco, it lines up. It lines up perfectly. So what is it, Greg? Tell us. Well, I wanted to know what you, because most of us also have, we kind of know, but also kind of don't know. And I've always been in that category, too. I was wondering, what do you think it is? Well, what it is is La Batalla de Puebla. It's a small right. victory that was won by a small town, a little small pueblito. But I was like, we got our ass kicked there, though, like eventually. But it was yeah, just like a year thing. later, like a year later, they came back yeah. and yeah. Their so ass. it's like it's just you know we just we were just celebrating one small victory was good for us. We're like, That's fuck right. yeah! But they Wait. celebrated more here than they do in Mexico. Absolutely, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> like exactly. exactly. Wait, they celebrated way more up here than they do. Who do they, they, wait, who do they, sure wait, who do they fight against? Who do the Mexicans win against? Uh, the French. I think it was, yeah. The it was French. the French, which I always thought it was against the Spanish until like. I mean, they came in and fucked us too, but you know. Yeah, <laughs> but this, but that particular one, it was against a much larger French, uh, French army, and that's why it's. It was like a David and Goliath situation. Yeah. So, but I was just wondering how much because yeah, because people always kind of get oh. a, have a different idea. Yeah, they're always confused. I always get it wrong. I mean, that's just because, especially here, they just think it is because they don't even celebrate, you know, September 16 here. You know, the actual right. independence the actual day. Independence yeah, day, they exactly. don't celebrate it as much as you know. But they yeah. do over there, but not here. You know, right? So, now, Cindy, yeah, you're, very, you're, you're a very strong woman. Very, uh, very, very, you know, a lot of respect. Um, do you? I, I think a lot of guys who take you out would probably be scared to make a move on you. Uh, because, you know, maybe you'd get mad. Wind up in an arm bar. <laughs> arm bar, you know, like a, a rear naked choke. So do you make the first move and you're like, or you do tell the guy, stop, quit being a pussy essay? Or like, how do you Essay. Know? Essay. <laughs> essay. <laughs> she just said she doesn't have a tire. <laughs> like, essay. Is it like, do you make the first, do you tell the guy, like, oh, give me your hand and like, what, what, what exactly do you? Man, I don't know what to tell you about these 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 questions, man. I don't know. <laughs> no, no. Okay, good. Don't be, then don't be like that. Let the guy make the first move. Okay. Yeah. Right? yeah I mean, I, I think that's the way it's supposed to be, right? I mean. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm not. I, I'm. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I got a question though. Okay, be honest. Be real. Be real. Are you doing this in the car because you didn't want to have to clean your house? No, that's not true. Um, actually, oh, I, I was just, wondering. <laughs> why? Because she's Mexican, she cleans houses? This is some bullshit. Oh. Hey, that, is, that is so racist. <laughs> that is so, you're that's, the that's, worst. That's, that's terrible. Okay, answer the question. Uh, so right now, I'm staying with my parents here in San Jose, especially during this like quarantine. So um, my dad's doing a bunch of shit in the house, probably making a bunch of noise and stuff like that. But I also just got done um, working out. So I was going to drive out there. Um, I, I trained from like 11 to 12 and then I was like, all right, so um, right. decided to do it because I don't know what the hell they're doing in there and I don't want to walk in and then be like, all right, you know, a bunch of noise, so. Now you had, a fight, you, you, you had a fight scheduled that got called off because of the coronavirus. Uh, is there another, another fight in the books? Do you have any Man, tricks? I hope so, but it's just, it's tough. I think uh, somebody else is going to fight. I was supposed to fight Antonina and I know she still wants to fight. Um, unfortunately, you know, Santa Clara County, they're, they're, they extended the restriction to fucking May 31st. So our gyms are still oh, wow. closed and it's, and it's really tough, but I'm kind of like sick of it. I was like, dude, um, I was just scared to do another, another fucking fight like that where I had to, you know, just not be able to train properly and then come out and fight like that. But that's what all the fighters are doing. But I have to like, it's almost like I'm in the same situation. I was quarantining myself in my last fight camp because I couldn't train with anyone. So it's almost the same thing. I know it's not going to be the best me in there, but... I'm fucking sick of it. I feel like I need a fight. So I might have to just, you know, I don't know, might, might figure things, things out, 
get a few training partners, you know, that I can maybe sneak into a gym or something because it's just, it's hard right now. We kept waiting it out, but now that they're doing another restriction, like, I don't think our gym's going to open. What was um, the or, in uh, Glasgow? That must have been insane. Yeah, that was sick. That was sick, but I want to fight in Fight Island, hopefully July. <laughs> fight Island? Fight Island. Yeah. 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 It's going to uh, happen. I believe it. We'll see how these fights go this weekend. Who's going to win this weekend, Carla or the Karate Hottie? Um, probably Karate Hottie. I mean, yeah. no, Carla Sparza, I lied. I don't know why I said Karate Hottie, but um, I just think that, you know, Carla's always going to figure out how to get them down, you know, and it's just kind of, and it's also with these situations, well, I don't know what you, both of their situations as far as training, but yeah, I just think it's, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't even know. I, I'm curious to see how the fuck they, they, they perform in this, you know, during this circumstances, you know, where things are uh, shut down and you're not really getting your proper uh, training camp, but some people are lucky. They do have like training partners. Some people don't, but. One of my favorite fights of yours was in Argentina against Patello because they were hyping this girl up, saying how she was going to beat you and she was going to kick yeah. your ass. And you just fucking demolished her. And you put in a, like a rear naked choke with no hooks in and then hopped over and put the hooks in. That was insane. That was a great choke. Yeah, dude. I just, uh, I understand the ground, you know? And also I was like trying to like, you know, mess with their mind too. Like, uh, uh, cause I remember, you know, obviously I had missed weight and then, you know, we, she did the face off and she did like the pageant of America. She didn't want to like look at me. And I was just like looking at her the entire time. She didn't want to face off. And I was like, all right, do you think this is a fucking beauty pageant? Huh? <laughs> I was like, just thinking in my head. So then the next day, you know, a fight day, they, you have to go down in the lobby so you can get in the buses to go to the arena. Well, we sent, we're sent, you know, we have to wait down there together. So it's her fight camp, my fight camp. And she's just like sitting there, they're playing the fights down in the lobby. And I'm just walking around, pacing around her like a fucking lion ready to eat. And she's like pretending like she doesn't see me. She goes a whole different way to go to the restroom. And then I'm just like, I don't know why I do that shit, but I think it's, I think it's good to like, you know, get it, like, you know, start, start beating them, mentally beating them during fight week, you know, before you You're, you're a badass. You're a badass. Sorry, <laughs> sorry for the questions about dating. I uh, hope you didn't get them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have to go. I figure you're going to try to put me in the spot a couple of times, so I'm just course, expecting. It's kind of his thing. It's kind <laughs> of his thing. I got, I got nothing but love, love for you. Um, so uh -huh. hopefully uh, uh, I'll see you soon. Um, yeah. And uh, I got, I'm doing a virtual comedy show Friday night. If you're, in, if you're stuck inside and want to yeah. see, see a comedy show, I'll, I'll give you a shout out. Uh, All right. Sounds good. You're my favorite. Yeah, well. Where can people follow you? Uh, on Instagram, Cynthia.Calvillo, on Twitter, you know, just look me up on there, Sin underscore Calvillo, and then I'm on Facebook. Sorry, no Tinder, no TikTok. Yeah. No. Um, yeah, I don't have any of that shit yet, so no I would either. say yeah, but I'm not going to have it probably. You're a grown woman. <laughs> You're, you're you're a lady. You need people to- Well, we have, there's a lot of old people up on that shit too, you know, so it's just kind of- Yeah, but you're cool. I'm just not into it. Yeah. I'm, I'm too shy, dude. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't, it's weird. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Cynthia. Uh, have a good rest of the day. All right. Thanks, guys. Peace. You're awesome. All right. That was Cynthia Cavillo. She's awesome. Very cool. You're great, dude. Yeah, yeah. She's a badass little fighter. Underrated, too. I think, like, like, I think she should be a star. You know, like. Hey, let me ask you something. Do you think she took Cookie Monster because they're friends? Cookie Monster. What do you mean? What's her name? In the, fight, the fight, uh, fight, Carla Esparza versus Karate Hottie. No, because she 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 uh, she fought her. They're not friends. Oh, okay. Well, that's why I didn't say they. I was wondering if that's why. No, I think because her initial reaction was the Karate Hottie, which is what I I think is. But it, I, she makes a very good point about who knows who can do what kind of training right now. But yeah. uh, uh, you know, her initial reaction, I was like, right, it's gonna. I and then she's like, no, 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 wait, Carla Esparza, and I was like, huh, I wasn't. So I was like, maybe she was like, oh, wait, no, I'm friends with Carla. I got to pick Carla. I don't know. I think that she fought Carla, so she would know, right? Yeah. Sometimes people want, like, it's, it's funny when someone loses to someone, and they, granted, that could have been either way. They pick the person that beat them because it, it makes them look better. And I think Right, exactly. On the other hand, I've seen it where they're like, no, that, that person's not going to win. You know, it's a, so... Who knows? I think if you're if you're talking in terms of trajectory, I mean, I think we definitely see, you know, karate hotties on the way up, and Carla's kind of. I, I love Carla; she's a sweetheart of a gal. But you have to admit, I mean, it's you know, 
she doesn't seem to be on the upswing of her career. She's won like four of her last five. Carla has. She's, has she really? She's done it quietly. Um, yeah, and I think that Karate Hottie loses the ones I think, like she seems to like lose the ones I think she's gonna win. She can't, she can't seem to get to that next level, you know? Yeah. Uh, but it should, be a, it should be a good one. Uh, also, they're saying that on the 23rd, it's Wait, gonna, so who do you think is gonna win? Carla. Really? Yeah. I guess I'm alone here. She's a dominant wrestler. Right. You know? And and that is probably the weakness of Karate Hottie. So, I mean, but I, I don't know. I think Karate Hottie is a more ascendant talent right now. I see her winning it. God, it's, she's hot. They're saying it's going to be Gilbert Burns versus uh, Woodley uh, for the week after. They're having three events in a week, Greg. The UFC. Listen, this is the way it's going to be when people can finally fuck each other again. <laughs> It's going to be fucking Thursday, Friday, Saturday, day off Sunday. That's the Lord's Day. Monday morning, Monday afternoon. <laughs> People like, are going to go bonkers. Right away, and then they're going to be like, all right, I'm done with this. These fucking guys are assholes again. I think well, that and that's what's going to happen with the UFC. They're going to have all these fights and be like, all right, guys, slow it down, spread it back out. So, yeah, uh, so Gilbert Burns, I, I hope, I, I want to see Woodley win that fight. I, thought, freaking, I, I love Tyron Woodley. He's talking a lot of shit to Israel Adesanya, which is, I, I, it's always weird when people talk shit to guys out of their weight class. Like, like they're not going to yeah. make it, you know? Yeah. The Izzy's like four feet taller than Tyron. Yeah, but they're not, they're not going to make it. They're not yeah. Gonna, it's like, what, what's the point, you know? But, I mean, Tyron would have, to, would have to win like three fights in a row for them to be like, to make that fight. Yeah. Yeah, he'd have to already be the champion again. Yeah. To do a good champion versus champion fight. Exactly. Well, listen, that's our podcast. Greg, what do you have coming up? Uh, let me see. Oh, tomorrow night, I'm doing a Zoom show, the KO comedy show for Cinco, Cinco de Mayo. Ay, 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 ay. Uh, that's going to be tomorrow. That's my best Mexican impression. I'm not, listen, I'm not, I'm not a good Mexican. You're great. That could be Mexican, Mexican. That could be Muslim, Taliban, you know, it could be I'm all very, of them. I'm very Mexican, but I'm not a very good Mexican. Um, Same. Uh, but, uh, so that's tomorrow night. And I think I'm doing your show on Friday. Isn't that right? You want to do it? Yeah. All right, Friday night, Zoom. Sweet, there it is. <laughs> I backed into it. Woo! Uh, uh, so I'll be doing your show on Friday. And then Window, what do you have? Uh, you can follow me on all social media platforms, even TikTok at the Window. Go add me on League of Legends. My username is the Sausage, the Space Sausage. <laughs> And let's get this party started. I want the Wing Dog Nation to all buy African daishikis and Trump hats. We're going to go to the Trump rally. We're going to be sitting right behind Trump and all of our daishikis and African hats. Just let these, you know, Democrats know that we're, you know, diverse and we can accept other cultures. And, you know, I want people wearing some That's exactly rooms. what that says. I want you yes. to know that that's exactly how that's going to come yeah. across. Yeah. And whatever happened to the podcast you wanted to do where you had a school bus and you were going to pull up the schools and interview kids? You know, I've had some fans actually reach out to me about that. They wanted, they really want that podcast. I am, you know, I'm going to get like a podcast van. It's going to look like an ice cream truck, but I want it to be like all decked outside with like podcast equipment and microphones and, you know, a soundboard. I want to go up to schools. I want to go on there and the campuses and interview kids, bring them back to the van and just interview them about like, you know, what's it like growing up in the year 2020 and, you know, like because back my childhood was stolen dude i had to go to homeschool for medical reasons so i want to talk to him like you know what's it like you know banging as a child in the year 2020 dude with like so, so. i was gonna say so much of this already is a crime <laughs> i don't i don't recommend you do any of this yeah but i, I obviously mean, don't have the funds to start that podcast at the moment somebody made a meme of you in an ice cream truck talking to yeah you. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a good idea. You think it's going to be a hit, Greg? Wear the dashiki, and it's a home run. <laughs> yeah. There is no... I appreciate it. Now, do you think of, like, do you sit there going, what's the worst idea I can think of, and then present it? Or did you think this is an actual good idea of you getting kids, luring kids into an ice cream truck to talk to them? Well, I'll have to get, you know consent of course by the parents you know i can't just go in there and you know i gotta, I gotta go to the parents and say yo can i have your kid come in my you know van for a minute while i interview him about you know the school and stuff no big deal and people say trump supporters aren't regular people this is yeah. <laughs> entrepreneurs you know 
It's crazy. No, I, I uh, Wean Dog, I love it. Now, this homeschool thing, how did I miss out on this? What was wrong with you? I never heard um, of it. Well, I was only homeschooled in high school for like my last three years of high school. So I went to regular high school for one and a half years. I had severe migraine headaches since I was two years old. Every single day oh, of my life, just oh, terrible. Wow dehabilitating headaches and i just I which is a so real much- thing listen and anybody that thinks that this is a headache is out of their minds yeah. migraines are on another level i know like my wife is throwing up them. yes yeah. it, it is it is to say debilitating is an accurate phrase because you can't do anything you mm-hmm. can't do anything but but succumb to it you know and there's very few effective treatments you know it, it, unfortunately treatments of migraines really hasn't progressed that far from from the traditional headache medicines right so, so i missed like 90 days of school my freshman year of high school so i ended up just having to do like some homeschool program and i actually graduated early you know so but i'm all better now i have no more headaches really i'm all good Smoke what do you weed. think it was? What do you think it was connected to your vision? Do you think it was uh, light sensitive? What do you think it was? It, I mean, I was very light sensitive. The sun, exercise, anything like that would just instantly trigger them. Lack of sleep. Um, but a lot of it I'm was, allergic to those things too, but that's yeah, just because I smoke a ton of weed. <laughs> a lot of it was just puberty. Puberty just like right. enhanced my headaches You're so You were just badly. all imbalanced and shit. And... Yeah, and then when I you know, evolved into my masculine physique, which you see today, um, they all went away pretty much. Well, that's good. great, man. That's awesome that you grew out of it. That's a tough way. Yeah. It's a tough road, man. I, I understand that. So, uh, yeah, so good on you. You know, it's nice that you, you grew into a relief period. That's awesome. Thank you. I appreciate well, thank it. You, Queen Dog. Thank you, Greg. I'll see you guys later this week. You guys are the best. Peace. All right, brother. You're the best.